So welcome to Fernworthy Reservoir and um, I'll just turn things around and give you a bit of a picture of things in a moment. I haven't got a great view where I am, I've just stopped somewhere fairly near where I've parked the car just so I can just have a bite to eat, including of course the famous Melton Mowbray pork pie. Can't do one of these trips without a Melton Mowbray pork pie, very important. Um, so nice trip down, the weather definitely has turned. I did notice as I drove around the reservoir that uh, it's much much drier than the last time that I came here. In fact the, uh, the reservoir is down quite a bit in terms of its level and so whereas it was overflowing um, at the far end of it, uh, cascading um, down the um, the outflow side of it. Uh, I might show a little clip of that. Uh, it's certainly not going to be doing that this time. Uh, we're well, well, below, well, well down on normal levels for this reservoir because it's been such a dry summer until now. Anyway, I'm going to continue with my lunch and um, then I'll do a little bit of exploring, see if I can, I can find the Fernworthy Circle and, um, and some of these standing stones and stone rows and things. Well, here we are, uh, back in the car, because it is just chucking it down. Absolutely pouring. I thought I'd have this nice little picnic with my Melton Mowbray pork pie and um, in the meadow over there, um, about a couple hundred yards beyond that gate. But um, yeah, the weather had other ideas, and so it's just pouring down. So I shall, um, I know I'll sit here and get bored for a while I think. Might even do a little bit of um, going through the menus on my new piece of Sony camera equipment. Well the rain, is, well it's still raining, I was about to say the rain has stopped but it hasn't, it's just started again. Um, but I took advantage of uh, the downpour in fact to go into Oakhampton and uh, get a couple of bits that I needed for, for tonight. I'm just going to see if I can go and find Fernworthy Circle. I just bumped into a couple of people who'd been trying to find it and, uh, and failed. Uh, they were out walking their two enormous Irish wolfhounds and um, that looked like a couple of horses really. <laughs> they are such big dogs. Uh, but anyway, there you go. Off we go, try and find Fernworthy Circle. Well, there we go. We have found Fernworthy Stone Circle. I'm trying to do as much filming as I can with the new camera, just so I can get used to it. It does mean it's probably a bit unsteady at the moment, but we shall see, because I haven't got a gimbal for this. So I'm just carrying it on a, on a tripod and trying to do a bit of the, the kind of ninja walk, as it is known. Uh, but yeah, what a lovely place, what a lovely little clearing this is. Uh, obviously the Forestry Commission here, or Dartmoor Wildlife Park people are keeping this clear. Uh, one thing I do like about this camera is that even though I'm shooting in manual mode and I want to get used to doing that I can relatively easily uh, adjust the exposure with the control ring at the front of the camera and uh, it should be okay at the moment but it's relatively easy to do that. What it actually adjusts uh, on the control ring is the aperture so the ISA will stay the same and the shutter speed will remain at 50 frames per second. So I need to do a little bit more research, probably do that this evening, about Fernworthy. But as I understand it, from what I have read 
uh, so far. Um, Fernworthy was, hang on, we've just gone a bit dark here. Let's open up the aperture a bit. That this area used to be um, in open countryside, in fact. But um, then it was forested in order to harvest these trees. And I guess that must have been 50, 60 years ago. Looking at the height of these, I don't know how fast does a tree grow. But clearly some time ago. So at one point this would have been on open moorland and in a very visible place. And I guess once again it would have been a place of gathering and a, a place of ceremony. So there's some extra little bits to this site here. Uh, possibly the remains of hut circles, though they would be very close to the main stone circle. So let's see how this, uh, this little thing does for a bit of walk and talk, shall we? It's a little bit heavy because <laughs> it's on my tripod, so I'm carrying the camera and the tripod. I think the tripod weighs, weighs about four times the weight of the camera. The midges, the midges are out in force. All this rain has brought them out and they are loving it. And they're loving having a target to get at. That's me. So, uh, I'm hoping that up on the moor itself it's going to be a bit less midgy and uh, that they won't follow me up there and that hopefully they'll stay in amongst the trees, time will tell. So we've got a bit more of a stone row here, I've come about 100 yards or so um, from the main From the main one behind me as you can see up there and uh, and then it kind of begins again here yeah. so it's a fairly extensive site so I've set the camera up here to do a little time lapse and, um, I'm taking my life in my hands with the midges, you know. They are just <laughs> everywhere. I don't very much that you can see them, but they're just, they're just all over me. And, uh, but anyway, I'm gonna have to put up with this for about another three minutes because um, this time-lapse is gonna take about four minutes to do. This is the first time I've used the time-lapse app. Gotta say, it's not especially intuitive 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 one of those whatever it is um, so it was a bit a bit tricky to set up it's not very easy to adjust the um, aperture and uh, all that kind of stuff uh, whilst you're in the app it doesn't seem to like it you've got um, it just seems to choose it itself and then you can do plus or minus you know stopping up or stopping down over or underexposed that's about that's about it so um, I don't know, I'll have to play around with it. Maybe there's more to it than, uh, than I've been able to discover so far. I'm gonna have to move. Sadly, sadly, um, it's taking a picture every five seconds, not every second. So, uh, so this could be quite a wait. And um, I'm not sure I wanna wait that long. I might have to uh, cut this one short and um, uh, just wait about another five minutes or so. I don't want to be hanging around for 
for 20 minutes. Um, sky's getting really dark. Um, I have a feeling that for, for this kind of um, a time lapse, to be honest, I think the tool that I currently have in my hand, which is the iPhone 7 Plus, is probably going to be a better, better thing for it. Sadly, rain has stopped play. I'm going to have to uh, put an end to it there, otherwise everything's going to get really wet. So I've been hiding in the uh, trees here for about the last half an hour or so, hoping that this rain would ease off, but there's little sign of it doing so. And according to my dark sky weather app, I think we're just going to get one row of uh, showers after another now. So I think I may as well head up and just get the tent set up and get some shelter. Uh, but as you can see, my rucksack's got its cover on and I'm well covered now. It's, uh, it's all weather gear, I'm afraid. Summer, camping summer at least, seems to be over for now. Well, this now constitutes properly heavy rain and uh, is not at all what was forecast. But I suppose that's Dartmoor for you. And um, looking on my weather app, the dark sky app, that's what's basically happening is this line of showers is just bubbling up continuously over the moors. And um, even though it looks clear behind it, from what the direction the weather is coming. It, each time this air hits uh, the higher ground above the moors, it's just bringing up these rain clouds. And, uh, and it's dumping its load right on me at the moment. Uh, which is a lot of fun. So we'll give it another half hour and um, I'm seriously considering abandoning this one and heading home, which would be a shame. Um, but uh, we'll see. I'll be at the point of no return in about half an hour or so. Well, sad to say, two hours later, and it's still chucking it down. It was not forecast at all. So, um, uh, I'm sorry, I've pressed the button. Uh, it's abandoned ship, and um, I'm not normally put off by rain, but honestly, it has just been insane it's just poured down and poured down and poured down and um, I don't fancy putting a tent up in this uh, just so I can get up again in a few hours time and put it away wet so <laughs> um, I'm going home I know that's rubbish that's kind of like wimpish and all that but um, but there you go I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to the car now it's just down behind me there and uh, make my way home Maybe I'll cook some soup under the, uh, oh no, there's probably not enough shelter under the, uh, under the boot lid to do that actually, but if I can, maybe I'll cook some soup before I go. And I'll feel like I've had a bit of an outing then. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. More will follow um, when I've had a bit more use of the Sony because I haven't been able to use it in the way that I really wanted to today, but more will follow. Uh, so uh, keep an eye out over the next week or two. Thanks for watching, take care and bye-bye. Still raining. <laughs>